Hi everyone, amazing here. Welcome to my free Power BI tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create seasonal sales in Power BI or scenario sales still. In case you're wondering what the heck is seasonal sales, let me just show you what seasonal sales is all about before we continue this journey. All right, thank you very much. So now that you have known what seasonal sales is all about, so let's see what we can do to have this created. The first thing you have to do is to have the data set we are actually going to use for this downloaded and follow along step by step to create your own seasonal sales. And seasonal sales can be any part of season, any season at all. So right now, wait, based on what we have right on our notepad right here, we have for winter, or we have for spring, we have for summer, and so on, all of that. So now you can create for Christmas sales, maybe your Christmas sales start from November down to December or end in January of the next year, whatsoever. Just know the start date and the end date as well, whatsoever. So those are the two columns we're going to be needing right now. So we're going to be needing this, needing this particular column right here called order date and this particular sales amount right here. So now that you've seen the two columns we're going to be use, using right now, let us begin to use this particular column to have this created. Okay, right now, what are we supposed to do? Let me just collapse this and let's see what we can actually get to do. I'm going to have this collapse as well. So already I have a new table right here. We're going to have our manager right in. So what we need to do right now, I have the table being clicked down and I'm going to go back to my home. And after I clicked on home, I'm going to come back right here and click on new measure. So we have to create a new measure for our seasonal sales and the first question we're going to be asking us is does that what kind of seasonal sales do you want to create so we have summer we have springs we have winter and we have christmas sales whatsoever but what we, well, what we have right here right now is what we're going to pick, be picking from so right now we want to create for what for summer right here so we want to create summer sales so let's see how we can actually get to create this particular summer sales right here so i'm going to go back so here we're back to the power bi environment so now i'm going to actually go for say summer sales 2020 or 2012 so now we have data that actually contains the date of 2012 and upward and downward right so now we don't have 2020 2021 whatsoever so now whatever data you have you actually follow along with it or you have this downloaded to practice before you actually use your own data so i'm going to put my equal to right here and right now we're going to be using the calculate function and now after using the calculate function we're trying to make a filter in order to filter we need to summarize the column where we have our sales in to know how much sales do we already have in 2012 sum or whatsoever so i'm going to be using my sum function right here so after putting the fun sum function the sum function is actually looking for column and what column is it so the column is actually the sales column so you must know the appropriate name you have because we have a lot of columns right here right now if we begin to scroll down to look for the column we're looking for we might end up not getting it at the right time and it's going to be a lot of waste of time whatsoever so right now i know the name of the column i want to use i'm going to type in right here so sales amount so now it pops out here we have it so first of all what we have right here is the name of the table where we have this particular column sitting right on called sales amount that is exactly what we have so after we might have gotten this i can actually go ahead and actually close the what close the uh, bracket we have opened so right now i'm gonna have my comma right here so we need a filter for this so what filter do we really want to have right for this so the filter we want to have right now is called dates between so dates between so that is the filter we want to have so right now it's looking for the date column so we have other dates which i showed you previously when the video just began so now we need to pull in the other dates right here which is the date you kept every single time you make a sales and you have it recovered in the same fact table right so i'm gonna go right here and say order date so i have it right here on the same fact internet sales data or the table whatsoever so now we need a comma right now so this is where the music is getting much more interested. So we are having a start date and we have an end date right here, but we have to begin with our start date. So what are we supposed to do first? As you can see, we are actually creating for what for our summer sales right here. So right now the start date of the summer sales is actually this particular month right here and this year. And the month is June. That is the 1st of June 2012 is what we are creating for. And it just got ended in... It got ended in 31st of August. That was when the summer just got ended and that was when the sales stopped actually popping in. So this is exactly what we want to create right now. So we just have to actually go ahead and actually copy this away from here and actually have it pasted right in here. And before I paste it, I don't just paste right here. We just need to actually get a what, what I call date. That is a function we need to call. 
So once we have this particular date function right here, we can actually go ahead and actually paste this right in here. So I can go ahead and actually close my bracket and have a comma right in. Now it's asking for the end date right on it. Now for the end date right now, what do I really need for the end date? For the end date, we definitely need under date function. So for the end date right now, I'm gonna paste the previous one in right here for we to actually get to format this, right? So now it actually ended in August, which is the eighth month of the year, comma, and it's actually 31st. That is exactly what it is. So I can now go ahead and close all the brackets I have open. After doing that, I can go ahead and hit enter and see how to commit this and see if it is working well for us. So we're gonna see it right here, right now in the JV. All right, here we go. We just have this creator. So I'm just gonna go to a new page. So here is my new page right here. So I'm gonna pick this right to see if this is actually working, which is fine nicely. So I can go ahead and have this opened and now I can choose a card. So here we go. We have this particular card right here. So I can, I can just go ahead and actually format this a little bit. So go here and go to what? Go to data label and we just need to scroll all the way down to this particular aspect and change it to what? Change it to none. And from none, that is exactly what we need to do. I can actually come right here and crank it up to what? Something like 50. The value should go up to 50. So now here we go. We have this. So Go ahead and actually make sure you expand it to make sure it's showing you what you should actually can work with whatsoever. So right now we don't want the decimal point we have right here. So go back to home, but we can actually format it right now. Go back to where we have it. Have this clicked and go back to the top level right here. We can now see it. So change the dollar sign we have right here to what? To English United States right here. So now we can actually take off the decimal once we have just gotten this committed. So right now here we go. So we can take the extra two decimal away from it. That is exactly what we need to do. So we've just gotten this done. That is the first way we need to actually go by it. So the next we're going to do right now is to see how we can visualize this to see how the trend went on a daily basis based on the date we have selected. So what are we supposed to do? We need to select a particular chart right here, which is this particular area chart. So I'm going to select this particular area chart here. So now we have just made a mistake. So I'm going to go back here and select the curve. So click away from here go back to the area chart and have it clicked so here we go we have the area chart right here so right now i'm going to expand my area chart and if I, after expanding my area chart i'm going to go right to this particular part here and make sure i pick this right to my area chart but right now it's not making any sense it's not showing me anything whatsoever so what do i do to actually get this particular one shown so we have extra what we have extra table right here that actually carries our dates right so here is the date dimensional table right here and here is our fact table so it's connected to the fact internet table and as well the fact table right here we have right here so now we're going to be using that date now to just get what we want achieved so i'm just going to go and scroll all the way down so when i scroll all the way down what do we see we see this particular one here called i'm just gonna make sure you see it so well so you can you see it's called full date alternate key so that you can follow along step by step i'm going to drag it down to this particular aspect here so here we have it Let's see if this really makes sense to what we are doing. Still, it doesn't really make any sense, but don't worry, it's gonna make sense in a while. In a while. So come, my, come right here and have it clicked. And once you've done that, just come all the way down and make sure you check this and let's see what happens now. So here we go. We can see what happens right here, right now is kind of too funny. We don't really understand what's going on, but when we hover over it, what do we see? We see our sales on a daily basis, not based on a particular a uh, month whatsoever so right now it's showing us august 3 2012 and if we come right here it's giving us what it's giving us the sixth month and uh, the 10th day of the sixth month of 2012 and so on stuff like that and we can see the trend and how everything goes so the next thing i'm going to show you how to create right now is that how many transactions do we really have on this particular day and uh, all of that so right now if i click right here right now what i'm going to see it's just going to filter down to what to the sales we have on this particular date which is the august 3 2012 this is what it is so i can actually click back and have the full view of how much sales we had made and stuff like that so right now let me show you what it is that we are talking about so i'm just going to go all the way to the top level right here i'm going to have this closed and i'm going to come down here and i'm going to have this so what i'm going to do right now is just to have this copied away from here so once i have it copied away from here make sure you're still clicking right here go and actually insert a new measure and now what we need to do is just to make a little tweak and actually get what we really want from here done whatsoever it's simple just come down and see what is going on right now 
So what I'm going to do is just to have the one I copied pasted right in here. So I'm going to paste it right here. So once I have it pasted, I'm going to say order, summer order. So let me just say order. Oh, sorry, transaction per se. Transaction. So how many transactions do I have in 2012 in summer? 2012 whatsoever. So right now, what are we going to change? So we're going to change this particular whole table. So we don't want it. We're going to change it down to this particular aspect. But what we want to do, we want some kind of do this by and by. Let's see what we can do for the first time. So come right here and move this sum. Instead of we to use sum right now, we want to use what we call count rows. Count rows. So what count rows does is just count how many rows do we have from 2012, from um, from August 2012 down to any month we have selected as the end of whatsoever. So now, if I go ahead and actually commit this, it's not going to work because we don't need to what we don't need any column. What we need is just the table. So I'm going to remove the column away from here. Once I have the column removed, the red that actually underlined it will just get itself disappeared whatsoever. So now we have what we really wanted and stuff like that. I can go ahead and hit enter. And that is all I need to do. So after doing this right now, we can actually bring this on to see how many transactions do we really have in summer whatsoever. So I'm just going to go Ctrl V. I have it pasted. I'm going to drag it away from here. Now I'm going to actually have to deselect this and actually bring this in. Now we have this, right? This is exactly how many what? How many uh, transactions we have just gotten. So I can go ahead and actually come right to the particular level here. Click on this particular one. So once you have it clicked on, so go all the way down. And once we have seen this particular uh, tooltip, what are we going to do? So we want to drag this particular one into the tooltip level right here. And once we have this on the tooltip, so if we hover over it right now, you can see we have just 17 transactions and we have made this particular over $30,000 of sales in this particular 17 transaction. And if we come right here right now, how many transactions do we have? Just 11 transactions in this particular uh, day. And we have over 19,000 like, transactions, stuff like that. This is how beautiful it is. I believe this is going to help you a lot to actually create a very nice analysis. So what we have learned right here right now is how to actually use calculate sum and date between whatsoever to actually filter through two different types of dates. So go ahead and actually try something yourself and see how you can actually do a lot of things. So you can go ahead and calculate Christmas from maybe a particular date in November down to December or to January of the next year whatsoever. Or you can calculate any sales between any date whatsoever and that is exactly what it is. So I hope you have actually learned a lot of value from this particular video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, leave, it sub leave uh, a, a, some kind of you know, just subscribe, leave a comment and share this to your friends and family in the office or at home. And let us actually uh, keep this going over and over again. Thanks for watching. Stay blessed and stay out of trouble.